And welcome back, listeners. We are live once again here at the AWS Sydney Summit here at beautiful Darling Harbour. We are so fortunate today to have a special guest, very special very indeed. Special. Thank you. Ed, would you love to introduce yourself because nobody does an introduction better than you. I would be happy to, Dean. Thank you so much for having me on, uh, on your show this afternoon. And uh, it is great to be at the Sydney Summit. The energy here is incredible. My name is Ed Lenter. And I have the, uh, the rare privilege of uh, running the Amazon Web Services business across Asia Pacific. Uh, I've also um, been with the company for a long time now, you Dean. Have, I've, yeah, uh, it's been eight, going on to eight years, Ed. It is, it is almost eight years. Thank you for keeping track <laughs> yes, of that. Yes, absolutely. I really appreciate it. Although, I think an annual email would have been nice, just yeah. to kind of affirm <laughs> true, true. my attendance at the company. Yeah, so, true, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we, Ed and I actually work in different locations now. He's based we here do. in Australia. I'm in uh, Hong Kong, but we always uh, look forward to touching base in, in, in events such as this. Very much. I mean, I, I remember the old times, mm. Dean, when it was just you and I and five or six other people here in Australia <laughs> yep. trying to persuade people about this concept of the public cloud and, and trying to talk to developers and help them understand that their lives were going to change. Yep. That was a lot of fun, wasn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, absolutely. And it's, it's actually really come a long way. And that, that leads us to the first question. Yeah. Where Are I you going to ask me a serious uh, question? Well, we'll start with serious okay. and we'll see how we go yep. from there. Yep. And uh, I remember uh, eight years ago was mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just a handful of us supporting our uh, APAC uh, customers yeah. and would have the typical conversation of trying to explain what is cloud, what's the benefit of moving to cloud. Obviously, that conversation has totally shifted yeah. uh, now. So maybe you could uh, talk about, Ed, over the last eight years, what's really surprised you yeah. when working with, uh, with customers? I, I, I was massively surprised when I joined. Let me right. just start with that. I didn't know <laughs> okay. a huge amount because everybody has a dirty secret. Mine is I used to be an infrastructure guy. Mm -hmm. I, used to, me I used to mainly me sell There's infrastructure too services. Why is that a dirty secret? <laughs> well, it, it, so mainly infrastructure services into data centers as well. I mean, yes. it gets worse and worse. Okay. It, it's, and so I, I remember back then the atomic unit of the, uh, of the data center was a virtual machine. Yep, yep. And we used to think so deeply about the lives of these virtual machines and mm -hmm. how we could wrap them with value to affect things like the availability of applications and to yep. affect uh, performance and so on. And then, then this transformation started to happen. Sure. Then, then the atomic unit of the data center seemed to morph into, into the microservice. Mm -hmm. And everyone thought deeply about microservices, and they thought, you know, how am I going to bring microservices to bear in my application architectures, and, and how is that going to affect me, uh, allow me to affect the rate of innovation? And obviously with microservices, the container became you know, front and center of everybody's thinking. And, and we, so we were all thinking hard and continue to think hard about how we can optimize for containers. But then it happened again, didn't it? Then, mm -hmm. then the transformation continued and the atomic unit became this individual function that I could take out of an application and kind of set free mm. in this, um, in this event-driven architecture, right. in Scale this completely serverless, infrastructureless mm. architecture. And for me to have seen all of that happen, you know, an old, an old infrastructure dinosaur mm -hmm. like myself, where now, where now developers are building functions and setting them free in infrastructureless architectures, Super exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Super and, exciting. And the listeners, the listeners must appreciate to hear someone like Ed <laughs> talk about microservices and containers and yeah. serverless. It's pretty awesome. Right? Almost pull it off? Yeah, no, you did a, did a brilliant job close? of explaining and you did. I think. Okay. This That's actually might be a good point to, to zoom out for a second and say, what does it mean to run the business in this part of the world? Like, what's, yeah. What does that encompass? in brass tacks. It's, it, well, it, other than being the best job in the world, <laughs> I, I, I will tell you it's complex. I mean, yeah. you know, job, job zero for all of us is to obsess about our customers. And, and so when you get given the, uh, the job of obsessing about you know, hundreds of thousands of customers right across Asia Pacific, you have to work out how that, who they are sure. and how you can optimize for their experience. And they have different needs. And so what we found is you know, you've got the largest enterprises using Amazon Web Services, You've got individual developers building amazing things. You've got startups that are creating new software companies or creating new B2C uh, massively successful digital ventures. They, you've, got, you've got incredibly successful software companies moving from selling licenses to the world of software as a service. And we have to think deeply about every single one of those customers and say, how can we make them successful? How can we optimize for their experience 
And then you, you bring to bear the incredible cultures across Asia Pacific, the diversity in this part of the world and the amazing people that we get to work with. I wouldn't do any other job. Awesome. And, and, and actually uh, on that, Ed, uh, so I know you've been here for eight years, yeah. but you haven't always been based in Sydney. You've I actually had a few roles across the business, building up teams, bu building up the business, yeah. whether it's around a global based in the US and, and other places. And you would have been fortunate enough to work with different industries, different customers, different cultures, and obviously different geographies. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about how you've seen uh, differences between geographies and cultures and how their approach is to innovation and transformation and a lot of the things that we're seeing in the modern uh, enterprise organization these days? Yeah, I, I, I'd love to do that, but before I do, mm -hmm. You know, can I talk about how consistent I've, I've noticed the approaches within our company Please. Right. to innovation yeah. mm -hmm. and the way that, you know, irrespective of where I go to parts of Amazon all over the world, I, I see a very, very specific recipe for innovation. You know, how do we build new products and services mm -hmm. that are going to have, a, have an incredible effect on customer outcomes? And, and the first thing I've noticed that's, that's really, really important in, in a company that's going to innovate quickly is this concept of the institutional yes. This, mm. this idea that when people have an idea, people lean forward and say, how do I find a reason to say yes? As opposed to, no, that's no. a terrible idea, yeah. or no, let me think of reasons why that might not work. And mm. you know, everywhere I've gone around the world inside of this company that we work at, I found that you get this institutional yes. You get people saying, well, maybe not like that, but if you rethink it, come back again and let's have another go at this. And, and so when I work with companies and I go to them and say, you know, let's help you think about innovation, I certainly look for that idea of the institutional yes. Right. And then the other thing I, I, I'm looking for, because I've, I've learned it again to be consistent across Amazon, is this idea that you want to make sure that you're innovating on behalf of customers. Yep. You know, there's lots of different models for innovation, uh, lots of different ways that work, but what I find to be the most effective is rather than building in a bubble, in a vacuum, rather than inventing something for the sake of invention, you need to find ways to think deeply about the customer experience. You need to find ways to say, if I built this, and you have to remember that about 10% of the time, customers don't know what they want. 10% yeah. of the time, you have to invent on behalf of your customers. The other 90% is fairly easy. You just iterate in the face of customer feedback. But mm -hmm. for that 10% of the time, if I built this, will it affect the lives of my customers and will it make their, their lives better yeah. in some way? And again, yeah. Where I see companies who are doing that, where I see companies who are using digital technologies to transform the customer experience, to make bold decisions, to build new products, new services, or even new companies, and, and somehow reinvent themselves, I see huge success. Right, right. And, and how do you see developers uh, playing to that to success? What's the contribution yeah. that they can make, whether it is in the inter enterprise or, or elsewhere? Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing I'd say, Dean, is there is a massive workforce reshaping that's going on in companies today, not just in Asia Pacific, but right around the world. Custom companies have started to realize that the days of outsourcing skills have left them sometimes in a really bad position, have left them unable to build and reinvent the customer experience, unable to build new products and services that have technology as the backbone to those capabilities to those products and services. And so one of the things I'm seeing customers or companies realize is they want to bring back people into their organization. And the people that they want to bring back into their organization are developers. Yeah. They want to bring builders back into their organization. And when they bring builders back into their organization, they want to organize them in agile ways. They want to build small, uh, independent mm. teams. They want to de deliver in iterative ways. Putting the institutional yes into the small organizational unit as well. Isn't it? And so I see that everywhere. I mean, right. look at what Korean Air did just uh, four or five months ago, where they ended a 40-year outsourcing agreement mm -hmm. with one of the world's largest outsourcing companies to move everything that they had to Amazon Web Services. And yes, on the one hand, they wanted to just run more efficiently, yep. but on the other hand, they wanted to unleash the builders inside of their company, and the builders are always the developers.
Right, and you, would you say that enterprises who are starting that journey of moving into a more innovation-focused, uh, transformational approach, I mean, what would they need to do to attract those developers? Because it's going to be very competitive yeah. then to attract those developers. What would your advice be to those type of enter enterprises who are just starting that uh, journey? Yeah, well, I, the first thing I'd say is, uh, I guess I'd repeat what our CEO, Andy Jassy, mm -hmm. says so often, which is, you know, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You want to over-index on trying to hire builders, on people who create things mm -hmm. with technology. Mm -hmm. But when you do that, when they come to your company, they're going to want to build. And you need to find ways to get out of their way. You need to make sure that they have access to tool chains, that they have access to agile platforms, that they have a, an underlying technology architecture that's, that's you know, a set of building blocks that mm -hmm. allows them to quickly create something and hopefully get it into the hands of customers to affect the customer experience. And I think that's super important. If you're going to hire mm -hmm. builders into your company and then ask them to wait, yeah. and then ask them to write business cases, <laughs> and ask them not to experiment and potentially fail, those people are not going to want to stay in your business. And so if I was a developer and I was looking for a company to join, those are the sorts of things I'd be thinking about. Did right. I mention, by the way, and I don't know if I'm allowed to mention this guy, I tell me you, if I, I think can't. You are. Did I mention we're hiring at are Amazon, we? Oh, and we're Amazon Web <laughs> Services? Yes. And we can be a great place to work as we well. We are a great place to work. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and how would you uh, give advice then to those developers to, to build up their skills? What are the areas of focus for them? Because I know you consider yourself as a pseudo engineer uh, back yeah. in the day. I could ask you to explain maybe manage blockchain or memory ballooning and, and yes. other technical concepts. I know you could probably spend two hours doing that. We yes. don't have two hours. So maybe focus on what the developers or the developer community out there could do to really build their skills. No, I'm going to focus on memory ballooning. Memory ballooning, yeah. Because yep. over subscription, I mean, over subscription was a seminal <laughs> moment in data center architecture. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I think your audience deserves to go deep right, on memory right. ballooning. <laughs> no, we're, we're not going to cover that, yep. although it, it was a great invention. Mm -hmm. I mean, it comes down to skills, mm -hmm. doesn't it, Dean? Yep. If I think about the fact that almost every training course on every part of the AWS platform is, is available at no charge on our online learning platforms yep. for, mm -hmm. for folks out there to go and access, to think deeply about, to go and experiment, and then go and try it out, mm -hmm. right? On our platform, we have things like the free tier. We have the ability to very, very quickly go and, and, and invent and iterate on top of that. So go and affect your skills, because if you go and focus on skills that are specific to AWS and to cloud computing, you will make yourself more valuable. Right. You, will, um, um, you will increase your skill set and your marketability in, uh, uh, in the labor market. Right. There's never been a better time to come and build. Absolutely. So for viewers out there who want to follow up on that themselves afterwards, take a look at aws.amazon.com slash training. That is a great destination. Yeah. I agree. And I'd like to remind our listeners there, if you have any questions for Ed, he'd be more than happy to uh, to respond to those. I will. And whilst we're waiting for those questions to come in, Ed, yeah. I know you, you have kids. I do. Uh, and obviously I have three when kids. Got, yeah, three kids. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And, it's a little uh, late for congratulations. Well, you know. <laughs> One of them's <laughs> at university. Still alive. University. Well, that's a, that's a good point, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, what career advice, I guess, did you give your your kids when moving into maybe an IT or technology field? Is uh -huh. it data science? Is it machine learning, robotics? Or is it playing fly half for the Sharks, who I know you're very passionate about? And for our viewers, the Sharks are a rugby union team that uh, Ed uh, supports, uh, probably be a, a top supporter of them, right? I they haven't won a uh, championship yet, though. I am one of their former <laughs> supporters, and thank you, Dean, for uh, reminding me about their... Uh, well, we, we, we believe that you should be able to experiment and fail. Right, yep. Not fail 15 years in a row. Right. They're not failing but fast. But certainly fail. They're <laughs> right. not failing fast, no. the Sharks. Um, well, I, I have a son who goes to uh, the University of Technology, Sydney now. Mm -hmm. And um, if I could provide him any advice, uh, clearly he's 18 years old. He doesn't need any advice, he nor does he take any advice. Right. Yeah. But if I had the opportunity to provide him some advice, you know, I think about what Jeff Bezos said in one of the letters recently to shareholders, going a couple of years back, where he talks about, and, and this was more advice that he gave to companies, but it is as true to individuals which is embrace the mega trends. You know, if I think about my own career, I've been very, very lucky to be associated 
with a couple of incredible mega trends. You know, I, I spent eight years from the very, very early days at VMware transforming the data center and thinking completely differently about how we would instantiate infrastructure as software. And then I had the incredible privilege to join Amazon Web Services and start to talk to customers about a world of APIs and services out of the public cloud. And when you have gravity on your side, yep. it really helps. I mean, you can be smart, you can be successful, you can do all sorts of good things, but don't fight gravity. And so if I think about technology today, and I think about things like machine learning, and I think about what's happening in this revolution around data and the way organizations are thinking about their data, or I think about the fact that almost every product or service that is going out the door from a large company today will have technology as the key piece of that product or service, I would want to be part of that. I would want to be building that. Mm -hmm. Now, if it was my own son, or daughter, the other thing I would be saying to him or her is how about doing something good? You know, there is so much opportunity today to use a platform like AWS and the technologies that AWS provides to actually do something for the social good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if we look across the market that we're in, if we look across Asia Pacific, or if I start to look at parts of Southeast Asia, there are so many opportunities to transform the human experience, mm -hmm. to transform the way in which human beings have access to things like healthcare or have access to financial services or so, and so on. I would love it yeah. if my kids were involved in something like that. Absolutely, and it, it's very much in line with uh, Dr. Enjuin's uh, uh, keynote this morning, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was very inspirational, I found, in That's terms exactly of what he's right. doing with so certain uh, communities who are less fortunate and, and also uh, uh, individuals who uh, might uh, not have the, uh, the benefits of mobility exactly. like we do, and using technology to what improve that experience. What more noble use yep. for technology than that? Absolutely. So, Ed, I know you've got to go. You are a yeah. busy man. I probably want to uh, close off with um, the event itself. You know, yes. We have three uh, awesome days uh, uh, to, to Thursday talking to customers and partners around technology and solutions and how we can better improve the lives of others. Yeah. You know, what are you looking forward to over the next uh, three days? Yeah, you know, the event's grown bigger and bigger every yes. year and you know, there's more and more energy every year, but some of the things haven't changed. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that it's still very much a technical conference, yeah. I love. You can come in and, and think deeply about really applied ways to get value out of the platform and to go and transform your own businesses by getting value out of the platform. I really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that hasn't changed is it's a customer conference. Mm -hmm. That it's customers talking about the way in which they've used the platform to do the most tremendous things. You know, we made a decision very, very early in the, uh, uh, in the genesis of Amazon Web Services that we would not constrain obviously within the terms of usage, the way in which our customers invented and innovated on the platform. And that has resulted in the most incredible things. And over the next three days, it'll be those customers standing up and talking in detail. And if that doesn't inspire you, Dean, I don't know what will. It's a great way to close off, Ed. Thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute insights. pleasure. Appreciate Thank you it. so yeah, much. For coming on. And I do love the hat. <laughs> stay with it. Thank you. So everybody stay online. We've actually got another special guest uh, uh, coming up.